for the second half. Getting away down this right hand side by Jane, goes towards Russo. Goal turn! There it is! Just what Manchester United needed! A breakthrough goal in the title race for them! And it's Leah Galton. So much of the ball in this game. And they take a chance when it comes. It's a free kick and allowed to take it quickly. And England's and I am up in support. Still England. Sets a Samo a brilliant. A brilliant goal from a brilliant striker who can't stop scoring for Spurs. And an equaliser. A rare chance to get forward. And a 16th WSL goal for Bethany England. This is absolutely brilliant from Beth England. First of all, it's a quick free kick from Irabuchi. She just catches Manchester United. And you think, what's she going to do? Is she going to come inside onto that right foot? Or is she going to take her on the left side? She doesn't. She cuts inside onto the right foot. But it's just, it's direct. And 1v1 against the defender. Can I get myself an opportunity? Cuts inside. What a finish that is. Into the far corner. Goalkeeper Mary Earps has absolutely no chance. Superb from Beth England. She missed that opportunity in the first half. She's not going to miss that. One that arrowed into the corner. Fourth goal in five appearances for Tottenham. But here's Garcia. Manchester United looking to respond straight away. Oh, they do in unfortunate circumstances. An own goal from Molly Bartrip just seconds after Tottenham's equaliser. The spare for the Spurs defender. Joy for Manchester United and it turns around so quickly, does football. Oh, feel for her. Absolutely feel so sorry for her. Bartrip, I think, played well on the whole today, but Manchester United, what a response. The equaliser comes straight away. Caught to back, break down that back five. But they were patient, they believed, and they've come away with those vital three points. Yeah, we're not forgetting towards the end of the game as well, they were down to 10 players, so they were under a lot of pressure, weren't they, in the last 10, 15 minutes to not concede. So they ground out the result, they did really well, and they'll be happy to get some goals on the board today as well. Yeah, and you, you talk about being down to 10, Fern, and that was because Ella Toon was sent off. If that red card stands, if Manchester United don't appeal it, she's going to miss three games for violent conduct. That would mean missing Chelsea away. Ouch. So even though it's all smiles, there's a little bit of a bitter taste after that, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. I think Ella Toon will be really disappointed in the way she reacted um, to a tackle. And, you know, you can't get yourselves in situations like that when you're in a title race and you, you're needed. You're one of the best players on the pitch. You're one of the players who creates goals, scores goals. And then you've got Chelsea coming up in a title race and to miss the game, um, you know, for him, Mark Skinner, I think they'll be really disappointed. She just, she just yeah. lost, lost yeah. her head, didn't she? It's just a rush of blood. Yeah, well, definitely. And, you know, you can't do that in games like this when it's a high-pressure game and you're needed from now until the end of the season, potentially three games you could be out. Yeah, we'll definitely be looking back on that for sure. So all the reaction to come. Well, we have got so much to talk about, so stay with myself, Kelly and Firm, because this is a massive win for Manchester United, a heartbreak for Spurs. But we have all your reaction and analysis as United go top next. Delighted to stay alongside us right now is Leah Galton, the scorer of the first goal. Brilliant finish, but first of all, was there a sigh of relief after that game <laughs> in the dressing room? Yeah, I think obviously after last week when we drew 0-0 against Everton, it was a bit frustrating because I felt like we had a lot of chances, but we couldn't take them. So coming out today with the girls, we just knew we needed to take the chances we created and, and we did that today. You did take your chance. It, yep. it seemed quite crowded in that box, but just talk us through how you got the shot away under all that pressure. I think I just came to my head. As soon as it dropped at my feet, I wanted to hit it first time because otherwise if you take a touch, someone's probably going to tackle you. So I just took it first time. Let's show it back to you. Is this the first time you've seen it back? I'm sure you don't mind yep. seeing the goals back, do you? Um, but as it comes in here, what's, what's the first thought? Just try and get the shot off? Yeah, just try and control it and get the shot off as quick as I can because obviously there's a lot of bodies in the box. So, yeah. 
I think Make it was my right foot as well, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was your right foot. Standing foot. Say. <laughs> Not too shabby, but I um, think I'd be quite interested to see what was said in at half time because obviously it was a tough first half, difficult to try and break them down. Yeah, it was frustrating, wasn't yeah. it? I think we we had a lot of the ball, but we just couldn't find the final pass. And he just said to us, we just need to keep moving the ball and keep moving them around and tire them out. Mm -hmm. So. I think we did that in the so second quite half. quite positive still at half-time. It was, yeah, and I think we need to keep it positive. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you can your heads go down, don't they? So. Okay, exactly, yeah. You also had a chance, Leah, in the first half when you cleaned through. You just maybe should have hit a little bit more accurate rather than power. Yeah, I think I got a little bit <laughs> excited. <laughs> I saw the goal, saw the chance, and I was like, I'm going for it. But, yeah, I should have just used my head and knocked it past her. But luckily, I got the chance in the second half yeah. and we won the game. So it's all right for today. <laughs> but, you know, your goal scoring tally is going up for this season. You got player of the month in December too. Do you really feel like you're coming into your best form now and perhaps at the right time for the running as the season goes on? Yeah, I think obviously I had a month out. I missed two games for my back injury, which was a bit annoying because I felt like I was in a good place. But I'm back now and I feel really fit. So, yeah, just keep going up from here. What's the spirit like in this team? Because we know the WSL is going to go down to the wire. You're top of the table right now. But what's it like behind the scenes in that dressing room? You know what? It's actually really positive, And I love that as our team because I feel like in this position, and I've been on other teams in this position, and it's very stressful. It's a very stressful environment because you have to win and you have to keep at the top. But right now, I feel everyone's pretty relaxed and we're just taking it game by game. Are you and I love that. Are you talking about Champions League qualification or potentially believing, talking about winning this title? <laughs> I think as a collective, we're just focusing on every game as it comes. Um, I don't want to think too far <laughs> ahead and get too excited. So we're just making sure we show up to every game and we keep putting in performances like today. To manage that and make sure we attack different ways and use our ability from other players. So what do the next few weeks look like then? Because you've got international break and then you have Leicester and then you've got Chelsea, which looks absolutely massive. Yeah, uh, that'll be, I mean, all, all games will be big, um, but it's at Chelsea, isn't it? So that'll be a big one. I'm very excited for that. I'm already ready. <laughs> and just a quick one from me personally for yourself. Yeah. You know, your goals towards the end of the season, any personal goals that you're aiming on? I would love to say I make goals, but I really don't. I don't want to ever set myself a target that I might not reach or I might not get to and then feel bad about my performances. So I just kind of go in really positive, make sure I'm enjoying the game and just playing with a smile on my face. And that's when usually I play best. Freedom and fun. Yeah, that's absolutely. That's what we'd like to hear. And a smile on your face now as you are the Barclays player of the match. Thank Congratulations, Leo, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very we'll much. We'll let you go and get warmed up and get back inside. Brilliant. So thank you for your thank time. Thank you. Thanks. Well Cheers. done. Congrats. <laughs> thank Thanks, Leah. It does, it does feel that there is a lot of positivity, of course, they're top of the league, but she did actually feel really relaxed stood next to us, mm. didn't she, Kelly? You've been in these situations. If that was me, I'd be so <laughs> stressed, but very relaxed, had a great game, and that's coming across now, isn't it? Yeah, it's the cliche that, that Leo just said. It's just taking it one game at a time, and I think they're doing that. They're not putting too much pressure on themselves. Today, they're just looking at Tottenham, going out there, trying to break them down. It was a difficult game for them today. It was frustrating at times because they weren't move, moving the ball as quickly as they, as they should. When, when you have a five, you have to move the ball from left to right, have runners, um, th third player runners to, to try and drag Tottenham out. And it wasn't until the second half when the game opened up, you felt like they was a little bit more, there was a little bit more relief for them. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, I asked that question about half time because it could have been a very different half time chat, couldn't it? It could have been, look, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. But it sounds like it was positive and it was kind of keep going and the goals yeah, will come. Believe. And they seem like they believe that in the game, which, you know, was really positive to see. Yeah, it's just um, it's just not the nicest thing they want to be touching on now. But the red card, Kelly, you brought it up then, not me. So <laughs> we, we, let's go into that because... You, you both sort of shrieked when you saw it. I don't know if it looked worse in real time or, or not so bad on the replay, but is this a red film? What do you think? It's that. It's, I saw it from higher up and it looked bad straight away. And that's I think a foul. There, that's a foul. The initial foul and that. You can see the face. You can see the face she pulls as she does it. There's aggression in it. And it, you can see she's just lost control, lost her head. And, you know, she'll be really disappointed with the lack of discipline in herself there. And think. that's the second, uh, second red card for Ella Toon in the league. And both against Spurs, so she must yeah. have some some beef with some of their players. Yeah, well, well, Cinnamon was quite sly and clever then because when she was down on the ground, if you saw, she squeezed her legs together to get a reaction from Toon. Mm. And I think you know, with players of of that caliber like Toon, who's got so much to offer, sometimes you can lose your head. I, I'm, I was certainly one of those players. I got a couple of red cards for reacting, and the only person that you hurt, or the only thing that you hurt, is your team. 
you know, yeah, and, and as well. She holds her face, yes. doesn't she? Yeah, yeah it's no not way. nice to see that, is it? No, because it's, no. it's nowhere near a face, and that's a bit disappointing. Yeah. But again, you know, that's where we're at at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you've talked about it hurting her team, Kelly. She's going to miss three games, Fern. One of those, providing it's all upheld, one of those is going to be Chelsea away. I mean, it seems too simplistic to say that could be a title decider, but Leah seemed to think, you know, they've got the depth and squad to. to to cover her but she's one of their best players i mean this is a huge huge loss yeah the number of goals and the number of assists she mm. provides for this squad you know like 25 in total over the last two seasons i think they're really gonna miss her yes they do have a lot of strength and depth within the squad but you know you can't hide from the fact that she's one of their best players and it's going to be a real miss for them in that game yeah, it's, just yeah. the, it's, it's just the through balls that she has and the you know when she comes pulls out to the wings and she plays those combination passes running on the shoulders she's very very good at that and i think yeah you like you said they have that um the players to cope with that but she's a big game player she likes Never, these games she? she's, she's very one that thinks cute. a little bit she's more a cute yeah. player yeah absolutely okay well we have plenty more reaction for you including up next we're going to hear from manchester united's boss mark skinner we'll get his thoughts on that massive three points as his side go back to the top of the wsl In the end, a positive trip to North London for Mark Skinner and Manchester United taking all three points and going back to the top of the WSL. I'm delighted to say Mark's alongside us right now. Mark, congratulations. What's Thank your initial you. reaction just coming down from the touchline there? Uh, yeah, I think, look, it's, it's one of uh, immediate emotion because the way the game went, good TV, I'd imagine. Um, <laughs> but, but the reality is that that's what we're trying to do to teams. We're trying to win the game. We're not. We're not here to bank up. We're here to try and attack. That's the Manchester United style. So, um, to come back in the ways, another learning experience. We had the Arsenal one, of course, um, and to come back in this 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 kind of nature once we conceded, which is not good enough from us. We're, um, it shows the true character of this team. Well, we can look through the goals with you as we've got you here. So let's start good. with with one nil. I mean, I'd imagine there was some frustration at half time, wasn't there? More importantly, I think the players were trying to fix at half time before we even went in, because you know there's a there's a great position here from Leo. It's what we talk about occupying the central area, and then you can if you're too wide there, you never get the opportunity to score. So Anna needed to do that more. Needs to take on one v ones. I think thought she was passive first half. But then when we're in there, Lee is deadly. I mean, it's a great finish. She finds the only gap. Tinny's close to it, but it's a great finish. So, um, and look, we deserved it. I felt we deserved it. We just need to get frustra frustration out of our minds. We said that about Honor at half time as well, like getting her more into the game on the right hand side, getting her joining in. And obviously, she did that for the first goal. Just how important is it for you to have your full backs joining in and creating those chances? The most important, if you want extra forwards in the box, you must then have width from your fullback so and we have two of the best fullbacks at doing that but Anna in the first half was passive and she need to be better. Were you frustrated by the first half performance? Oh, Could oh, you expect better from your side? Absolutely do you know what Kelly expect us to move the ball quicker so one two mm. touch through the lines play then use the width then go we're a little bit passive and that that's not us so we'll work on that and we'll come back better next time. That's what we said yeah. at half time, wasn't it? Needed to move the ball. We quicker. did. Mo need, sure. need to move them around more. Hopefully, you saw that in the start of the second yeah, half. Yeah, definitely. We, we, we were quicker. Yeah. We said we said there was a massive difference, but unfortunately for you, you did concede. I think it was about nine minutes after the first goal. Um, we're not going to see that one, but we're now going to see what happened 14 seconds <laughs> after that. So I'm going to show you the good stuff. Yes. Uh, 14 seconds after Beth England's equaliser, she says, "Keep your heads to her teammates." But what was the message to your team right now? What were you saying on the touchline? We're literally like so. There's going to be spaces in behind. We put Luthia on to run behind Kerry's Harrop because of the speed. Look at the back line. There's four of them. You put it into that area quickly and early, and the, it's a it's a defender's nightmare. You know, it's it's just something when you're facing your own goal, it's hard to defend. Mm. And if not, we could probably tap that in. So it's it's a great ball from Lou, but we knew we could get behind them. I mean, how pleased are you with? The reaction there from your players going direct you know heads weren't down it was one all this is a massive game in the context of the title race and they were straight back at it you must have been delighted they never cease to amaze me in in the way that they do it in terms of the experience we've had the experiences we're having i'm showing a real they're showing a real growth a real mental attitude to to want to be successful we've got loads of things to do yet really good teams any time you switch off you could lose focus and and we haven't today so you know, even what was thrown at us in the game, we've uh, 
we've come out the other end and, and won the game. You have, but unfortunately Ella Toon didn't come out the other end of the game. She was sent off. Um, we're going to have a look at the incident mm -hmm. now, but if this red card is upheld, she's going to miss three games and, and Chelsea, which is massive. But let's just watch this incident back with you now. How did you see this? Do you think this is a red card? Well, look, it's a foul. So it's the first foul. Look, there's a could be as conceived as a kick out there, but look, it's, it's, we, want to sh we want our players to show passion, commitment, energy. And this, look, when you hold your face, I'm not, yeah. it, it's just, a, it's, it's play acting in, in my opinion. That's not her. Uh, obviously with Ella, we'd look at that and, but we, we will not put Ella in a position where you want, I want to see that from her. I want to see passion in our players. I want to see commitment. And yet, there's a little bit of play acting there. It's just, for, for me, it's something we'll work on internally, of course. We have to be accountable. But, you know, you, you need a little bit of help from other players as well. Are you going to appeal that red card? I will appeal that red card, yes. OK, and if she is to be missing for those three games, how big a loss is that for you? Honestly, you find a way. You, you know, I'm sure when Arsenal didn't have Kelly, they found a way. You know, it, it's, it's the reality of when you have a team that wants to compete, you have to find different ways. The good thing about us, we can go behind you, we can go in front of you, we can go between you, we can go in the air. For us, we have different ways of scoring. And you know what? If we do have to miss Ella, we'll have to find a different way. And I'm excited for that. Well, these are your remaining fixtures coming up for the rest of the season. The good thing for you is you're away to Chelsea, but then you've got some favourable home ties. At least you're at home for some of those, those big games against Arsenal and Manchester City. But when you look at the remaining games of the season, I suppose you are eyeing up your title rivals already. All I'm seeing is ha, 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 <laughs> down the side. So well, hopefully it's you that's laughing at the end of the season. Absolutely, though. I'd hope so. I'd hope so. But no, look, any of those teams on their day are good enough to take points. So whether we got Chelsea on March, the next one is Leicester after obviously Durham in the Cup. So we just stay focused. Then you can really put your energy into game plans. So for us, nothing past Durham and Leicester. And then as they come, everyone might be in different form by then. We don't know. So we'll stay focused and calm. When are you going to stand here though and tell me that you are title contenders? Oh, we're title contenders. That's what we want to be. I love to hear that, but Mark. Yeah, look, <laughs> look, I mean, we don't fight every day in training not to be. And that's not a pressure. Good. Being a Manchester United manager and player, like there's pressure. But for us, it's m much more about come out the other side of that pressure, enjoy it. And then where we are, we'll, we've got to earn it. And as long as we earn it, you know, we hopefully be where we want to be at the end of the season. I was literally just about to say that pressure, obviously, mm -hmm. on the players. I've seen you talk about it before the games, how to alleviate that. And you say yourself, I take it off the players and yeah. let them go. How do you do that? By, by allowing them... So, so when a, a, a frustration creeps in from coaching language, it can be something where you give an instruction rather than ask a question. Something as simple as that. Okay. Ask the player a question. Let it drip into their mind, and then they see that picture when it comes. Otherwise, I'm not coaching robots, and I won't coach robots. I'll coach players that are organic. They will learn, and we will motivate them from that. And then when the big pressure moments come, they know they can rely on me to take them, and they can just do their jobs. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. And now, looking forward then, what does the sort of next couple of weeks look like for you, the international break? You know, it feels like you've just had this, this big win. What goes with the players that aren't going away? What happens? We always work. So um, we'll try and get some minutes in their legs in maybe if we can arrange a friendly in, in, with one of the teams, obviously, while they're away. Um, but the reality is there's no time to stand still. And so as a staff, we don't stand still. Some of my staff might get a couple of days off. Um, but we, we don't work exhaustingly. We work because we know what we want to do here and so once we've at the end of the season hopefully that will show but in this window we will work since you've joined manchester united have you even been surprised at the rate you've accelerated and grown at um everything in the foundations is there to do it um but we all know it's challenging the mindset of a player winners aren't just created overnight you have to win and you have to lose and you have to experience and for me, I'm not, I'm not surprised by the players with the qualities we have and the ambitions of the club, but, you know, we are accelerating that and trying to do something that's very difficult to do, which is win, when we haven't got that in our, our history yet. OK, well, Mark, thank you so much for coming to join us. We'll let you go and get warm and get on that bus back up to Manchester, but great to have your company and congratulations on the three points and thank going back to the top. Thank you very much and, and thank you both. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers, Mark. I'll take that off you and let you go. Cheers. Good to see you. So what we're going to yeah. do now is... Um, have a look at some of the not so positive bits from Manchester United, which was their missed chances today, Kelly. And as a striker, I'm sure you'll look at some of these and think they could have done better here. Absolutely. Katie Zalem there, you know, just whips it over, doesn't get enough on it, and it's not on target. And normally you think from that angle, from that position, you know, you just got hit the frame, and she doesn't. 
Russo here doesn't see that the um, Suleiman on her back, but she does well to turn, you know, gets the shot off. But it was it had a lot of these, you know, so to speak, half chances. Not really clear cut, but you know, it, it was a, there was pressure on them to, to get this game. You know, those three points. Toon hits the post there. They had chance after chance, but just lacking that cutting edge. Fern. Yeah, that was better from them there, as you can see down again down the right hand side. We said they didn't do it enough mm. in the first half, and they grew into the second half, and they did that more straight away. And you can see it finished with Ella Toon hitting the post. Um, but yeah, they created a lot more chances in the second half. But sometimes it's about finding a way to win, which they couldn't do against uh, uh, last week against Everton but it's about finding that way and Mark Skinner will take ma massive positives that maybe it wasn't the most attractive game yeah, it doesn't matter at this point you'll take anything when you could win ugly you know um, hitting the post there they, they create chances that's the good thing that they're doing um, but yeah it doesn't matter how you win as long as you get those three points at the end and they failed to do that last weekend so I was sitting there watching up there with, with you guys and thinking is this going to be another couple of points dropped have they learned from the, uh, last week when they did drop points against Everton so they just managed to find a way to win and that's you know what champions potentially do Chelsea do it all the time and you know a striker do you, do you feel that pressure do you know I mean? like the last game they had so many chances to get Everton nil nil do you feel that in the back of your head the longer it goes on without you scoring a goal? I think I breathed a sigh of relief <laughs> for Leah when she scored, let alone Leah herself. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was playing, uh, you know, you just think we need to give me enough, another opportunity. You're thinking we can't drop more points. That that does go up for me. Well, in in the game, you're even thinking I, we I cannot drop that. these points. Yeah, all. it's vital. So you have that self-talk in your head. You're thinking I need to stay in it. I need to stay focused. I need to wait for my chance. You've got to believe that you keep doing the same things, making those same runs and, and it will happen. And it did happen for them today. It's all about winning mentality now, isn't it, Fern? If we look at the top four of the WSL yeah. right now, uh, as Kelly said, maybe some of this is going to start coming down to mentality. I mean, we saw Arsenal really lose quite a lot of ground yesterday when they lost to Manchester City. Chelsea not in action this weekend, so it's, it's Manchester United that are sitting pretty at the top. But how much now does this come down to that winning mentality? And when we talk about that, is it actually Chelsea that are in the driving seat because they've been there and done it for the last three seasons? Yeah, I think potentially a lot of people would say that. I think maybe what Manchester United got at the moment, obviously, as you can see, they've got the points on the board. Um, but they're developing that winning mentality over the course of the season that we saw them beat Arsenal at the Emirates coming from behind. You hear Mark talk about it quite a lot. They allude to that now and they'll go back to that in the changing room and it'll give them massive confidence. So they might not have the experience of winning yet, but as Mark says, that, that's what they're aiming to do. So, you know, it's really exciting. And Chelsea and Emma Hayes were definitely a Spurs fan today, weren't they? But, you know, these teams have still got to play each other around that top four. But are we being a little bit too naive there? Are there other teams that might have a say and might spring some surprises? You know, perhaps people didn't see that Everton result coming from Manchester United last Absolutely, weekend. Absolutely, yeah. They've all got all the big four teams have got to play each other but there is potential that you could drop points against the mid-table teams because you see all oh, Aston Villa beat City at the beginning of the season you know these teams can have a a world a worldie so to speak against one of the top four and make that happen you never know this league is so competitive you see Liverpool start of the season yeah take points off Chelsea no one saw that coming so yeah it's still it's all to play for really isn't it you can't predict it at this point no, it would be foolish to predict it, so we're <laughs> yeah, not going to do that. Um, but up next, we are going to hear from the Spurs boss, Rianne Skinner. It's seven losses on the bounce in the WSL for Tottenham. And we'll get the thoughts of their boss next. Well, for Spurs, it's seven defeats in a row in the WSL, despite plenty of effort and running Manchester United close, a loss today. Their boss, Rianne Skinner, is talking to Lindsay. Rianne, fine margins again, but is that any consolation on this one? No, it's really difficult to take, to be honest. For all, everybody, you know, players have given it their absolute all. I think we were very good for large spells of the game. Um, just unfortunate in terms of the, the goal that we conceded. We weren't obviously switched on enough at the second goal. Um, but in terms of the performance, you know, I think the players had belief, confidence. We had quality, we had great opportunities. Um, and we just couldn't get it over the line, unfortunately. And yeah, you know, we're disappointed with that. Molly Bartrip at the end looked devastated with the own goal and you say about switching off and, and that probably is what led to it on that counter attack from Manchester United but how much of a job have you now got to put your arm around her and get ready to go again? 
Yeah, look, I, I think, you know, she shouldn't be in that, have to be in that position in the first instance. And I think the way that she obviously reacted to that just shows the, the passion and desire from all of the players in the team. That's how much they care. And, um, you know, we were desperate to put on a really good performance for all the fans here today. And I, I think we did that. And, you know, for Molly, we'll look after her. And obviously, she's had an outstanding game, to be honest. And it doesn't define you in those moments. The most important thing is, you know, collectively, we'll look after her and pick her up and we'll move forward as a team because essentially you win and lose and draw as a team. It was part of the difference between the two sides today, the sustained possession. It felt like you were struggling at times to keep hold of the ball. I thought we turned it over too much in the first half. I felt like the distance that we were supporting was too far and so we didn't have as many options as we normally would in possession. So we obviously tweaked a couple of things which helped us to be better on the ball and just look after it for longer in the second half. Um, but obviously then we created some good chances on a counter in the first half and we had some better chances overall in the second half from just playing closer together. Um, so it's just, you know, the pitch is, is a lot bigger than what, you know, you're playing on every single week. So it's just a bit of an adjustment to that that I think we needed to find our feet really with that in preparation for this game. I know she's on the losing side, but Bethany England has scored for a third WSL match in a row. Are you surprised that she wasn't in the England selected list? I just think Beth's got to keep working on what she can control. And, and ultimately, you know, Serena's got to make decisions based on what she feels is right for the team. And it's not my place to judge that or anybody else's, really. I just think Beth's got to do her job really, really well. And then, obviously, you know, if that happens, then clearly, you know, there's opportunities for playing for your national team. So I think that's, that's all that we can focus on here and that Beth can focus on. And just in terms of your current run of form, seven defeats in a row. It's the current longest losing streak in WSL. And you've got Manchester City coming up next. From your perspective, are you starting to feel a bit of pressure? And what can you do differently apart from what you've already done? Well, I just, I'm, I'm pleased with the way that performances are improving. And, you know, we've been so close in three different games, Aston Villa, Chelsea, this game today. You know, the performances are getting to that point where we're just so close to getting a result. And that's all we can really focus on and control, really. The next game is the most important one. That's always the case. And ultimately, we'll keep growing as a team. I think we've shown some real quality in what we're able to do in and out of possession. And, you know, the tables are turned, football's football. And obviously, we just need to keep working on that and being as resilient as we can to get those results. Lovely. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you. Yeah, Rianne Skinner's face really tells a picture, doesn't it, Fern? It is seven defeats in a row, but she feels there are positives to take from these performances. They ran Chelsea close, they ran Manchester United close today. Do you think she's right? Yeah, I think she's right in terms of, you know, we said it pre the game as well, that they're scoring more goals now. I think that's a positive. Still, they haven't kept a clean sheet, so I think she'll be disappointed in that respect. But again, it's from an individual error, so slightly different. But they grew into the game. They really tested Man United um, at points today, and they created some really good chances in the first half. But, you know, they, a bit too sloppy in possession. When they did receive the ball, they kind of caused themselves their own problems. They didn't really manage to get out of their own half. They, they struggled at times when they were in possession, I thought. Yeah, yeah. They, just the numbers that they attacked with, it was only three players at times, Neville, England, and they were Bucci, and sometimes that wasn't enough. You know, England's crossing to two players, uh, two players that I just mentioned, and there's just no other urgency to get in the box. I found that a problem. Yeah, they went um, with that five at the back today, didn't they? We were talking about it, and, you know, it was, it was good defensively for them. Mm. Obviously, it made things really hard for Manchester United. It condensed the spaces, but then going forward, the gaps were big. Yeah. Couldn't really get Drew Spence involved into the game as much. So they found that difficult at times, but I'm sure there's, you know, there's lessons to be learned from that game. Does it feel that they are growing, especially since January? You know, some would say that their season has had almost a restart with that January transfer window, Kelly. Or is that, you know, has there been, to give context to the season, has Rianne Skinner had a tough time of it? She has, yeah, I think from this performance today, they did do enough to potentially get, get a point. Um, I just feel like the signings that they've made have made a big impact. Bethany England, third game in a row scoring. Um, what she brings to this side is goal power. They believe now that they can win games. Yes, they're so close and it's fine margins. You know, the, the goal that they conceded, but their own goal, Molly Bartram, they just switched off uh, after they scored. You saw Bethany England saying, concentrate. Ten minutes after you s score a goal is the most important, crucial time. And they switched off. The ball was played over to, on the right-hand side to Harrop, and they, they fell asleep. So it's those small margins that can lose you a game, which it has today. Yeah, you mentioned Bethany England there, and we can hear from her now. She's in form, but on the losing side today, she's been talking to Lindsay Hooper. This is a really strange one for me to speak to you about because you've scored in the third WSL game in a row and you've actually broken a record. 
by doing that. But you're on the losing team again. I mean, how are you feeling about this? Oh, obviously, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm gutted. I felt like we gave everything in that game, I think. We, we really weren't good enough at times in picking out that final pass, but we managed to get ourselves back in the game. We even took us time getting back to the halfway line, and, halfway line sorry, and just to concede so quickly is just absolutely devastating because we, we knew we were always going to be tough to climb that first hill to then climb a mountain after that. And uh, yeah, it was just, it were really tough and I'm, I'm so disappointed that we couldn't come away with more than a point in that game because I thought we did deserve it. But once again, just silly mistakes. I mean, I can't even, I, I don't even know how the goal happened. Like I, I feel for Moll because like, obviously she's going to take that on her shoulders, but it's not just her. We win as a team, we lose as a team and we all have to pick her up. We did see the scenes after the final whistle where she looked devastated yeah. by it. Have you all consoled her already? Yeah, I mean, obviously the girls have got round, we've spoke to her. I thought she actually had a really solid game. I don't think she did much wrong in that in that game. And it's just one mistake that obviously cost us, but that can't define her game. I thought she had a, had a strong game today. And it's everyone, like I say, it's the whole team that's jobs to, to get the goal in the other net. And we just didn't do it enough today. The goal that you managed to score, some finish. Uh, I know you were wanting to get it on your right foot. Did you get some surprise that you managed to get that space? Do you know what? I just thought, go for it. What have you got to lose at this point? I'd had a few um, runs in behind or runs at um, Maya in the first half and I just thought, just be confident, get at her. And yeah, obviously managed to take it inside onto my preferred foot and just was so chuffed to see it going back at net, really. But um, yeah, sadly, it, it's irrelevant, really, because it weren't enough today. Since joining this club, you can't ask much more from yourself. You scored in these three WSL games in a row. First WSL player in history that scored in those games but gone on to lose them. But you can't ask much more, can you? And, and I'm sorry to tell you about that. Yeah, I don't know if that's a stat that I want to be in the history books for, but look, all I can do is keep giving everything I can to this team. And they brought me in to score goals, and that's what I'm trying to do. We, I don't really have much to say because I'm just so devastated for the team. I thought we've been showing some good performances. Um, we've been building, obviously, we had a few bad results against Chelsea, but I think we still managed to put in like half decent performances. And today, um, I would like to say, no, I don't usually comment on refs, but I think the ref needed to get more control in that game. I thought it were very scatty and it caused a lot of friction and tension and there were tackles flying in that didn't need to be to be flying in. And uh, I think that they need to do better in getting control in games like that because someone could have got hurt. And finally, seven defeats for Spurs in a row. Do you think there's a much bigger picture to this? Honestly, I have no idea. I think, I think it's just, again, silly errors that we're just costing ourselves and we're finding our ways to claw ourselves back into games and then losing it again. Um, we obviously need to take a, a good look at ourselves and I, I don't think it's... On, honestly, it's not my job. It's for, it's for the boss to, to go through that when we, uh, we analyse the game. Um, I'm just... I'm just bewildered that we managed to concede so quickly after getting us just on level terms. So I think we obviously will go back, we'll review it, see what we can do better. And we've obviously got a few tough fixtures coming up after the international break, but hopefully everyone can go away on camp, have good international minutes, come back fresh, ready to go. And uh, yeah, we get ready for, I think it's either Reading or Man City now. Well, we wish you well with those. Thank you very much for coming and speaking to us. Cheers, thank you very much. Yeah, perhaps analysing the game isn't Beth England's job, but she did her job today, didn't she? Spurs had five shots. She had four of them. Fern, she's been a terrific addition. That feels like an understatement, doesn't it? Yeah, she's been excellent. I was probably a little bit harsh on her, I think, in the first half for the chance that she got, you know, saying that she had a lack of composure, which she did. But, you know, in the second half, you know, she, she was brilliant. And, and this one, you're just thinking, keep going, keep going. And it's just massive individual brilliance from her. You know, she cuts inside on her favoured right foot and she strikes it bottom corner. It's an absolutely brilliant finish from her. I think May Letizia in this will be disappointed in the way she's defended it. 1v1 defending, not the best from her. Wants to keep her on her left foot and not let her cut inside on her right. She gets far too much space. But, you know, it's a great finish from Bethany England. Very much deserved for the way she played today. Serena Wiegmann must have watched them be thinking... Ah. <laughs> it is, it's a selection headache, surely. A yeah, good one to have. She's not in this England squad, but she's got to be knocking on the door, Kelly. Well, she has to, when she puts in performances like this uh, and keeps scoring um, and back-to-back -back games, then that's all you can do. That's your job. That's what you're paid to do to help your team score. She wants to be scoring goals. She wants, she's upset about her losing her England place. But the, the way you deal with that is by your next performance, scoring goals. Get the manager in your thoughts again.
oh, she's just going to be sat at home though. Well, she's not to be training and things, but <laughs> watching the Arnold Clark game, she, she's going to be feeling like she could be a part of that. And is she almost hoping you never wish anything bad or any bad form on a player, but she's just got to hope she continues this form after the international break. Do you think she is going to get a chance with Serena Veeglund? I think the way she's playing, you know, it'd be very hard to overlook her. She's scoring goals mm. in a team that doesn't score goals as well. So she's bringing the goals for Tottenham. Uh, it's, it does a lot on her shoulders. But, you know, as you say, international break, she will be working very hard behind the scenes to keep practicing her finishing, mm. keep practicing, you know, a defensive game and things like that. And the longer she does that and more keep scoring, then I think it'd be very hard to overlook her at this point. Yeah, Rianne's going to set the word positives to take, Kelly, and, and that'll be some of the chances they created today. When we look back at some of these, though, she'll be perhaps a little bit aggrieved that her players couldn't have been more clinical, but especially these first half chances. Yeah. Ashley Neville Golden. here, perfect drive in, great ball through. Iwabuchi here, just the final pass. You know, doesn't make the right decision. Maybe Bethany England should have gambled a little bit and taken that forward run, but there's just um, a miss, miscommunication, no eyes, contact. And it was uh, this one here, Bethany England again, in the right place at the right time, just can't the last be moment, wasn't it? it. Oh. Yeah, last moments of the game, and you're thinking, go on, Beth, uh, level up the game for, for your team. But it just didn't fall for them. And But she's she's there, and she's making it happen. She's upset with that, because she knows that was a really good opportunity for her. Do you feel Spurs fans have reasons to be optimistic for the rest of the season? For an are things going to start going their way? Because seven defeats in a row, psychologically, that's quite damaging, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. The, they've somehow found themselves right at the bottom and in that relegation mix and battle, um, which obviously Rianne Skinner will be definitely wanting to get them out of sooner rather than later. I think the positives to take from that is they're scoring goals, they're getting themselves higher at the pitch. But defensively, for me, I think they need to, to tighten up and, you know, unforced individual errors trying to eradicate them from their game. OK, let's go to the other end of the table then and look at the battle for the title and the remaining fixtures for all four sides and when they play each other. So uh, you can see that Arsenal arguably have the toughest run in there towards the end of the season, but they're the top four right now. Kelly, is it going to stay like that? I mean, we did, like we said earlier, it'd be almost foolish to predict it, but it's so hard to call. But it's between these, these four sides now, isn't it? Who do you think has the advantage here in terms of home fixtures and in terms of form? Certainly not Arsenal, looking at them. Mm. Two, the last two games are away, the Man United and Chelsea. For me, it's Chelsea because they've got that nous and that experience of doing it back to back. I think it's the third consecutive year they've won the FAWSL. Um, and obviously getting having Arsenal at home, they love that fortress of King's Meadow. Uh, Manchester City for me though, you know, have been playing well of late. I think it's 16 or 17 games um, unbeaten. And uh, Lauren Hemp and Chloe Kelly the other day were phenomenal. And when you've got players of that calibre um, and Bunny Shaw leading the, the league in goal scoring, they're a threat too. Oh, God, it's, it's Michelle, it's so hard to pick. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, for me, I think Man City, uh, they do really well at times. And then in other games, they maybe lack a little bit of flair and a little bit of cutting edge. When it's you've only got three points, isn't it? Like, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I think with Manchester United, for me, I think... That potentially is your one-two between Manchester United and Chelsea. I think they've got Chelsea, but in terms of those other two weekends, could they potentially pick up the points and then have the, the edge on them while Chelsea are fighting it out with United and City? You know, it's, it's close. <laughs> it's very I tough to call. What's yeah, your well, thoughts, Michelle? Well, no, like, that's <laughs> what I'm paid to do. I'm paid to ask the questions. But Arsenal are three points behind Manchester City, but they do have that game in hand for that coveted Champions League spot, Fern. Could you call that one at the moment? I think, as Ke Kelly just said, Arsenal have got a, a very, very difficult run in there. Um, and for me, I think Man City are kind of coming towards mm. form and Arsenal at the minute are kind of, you know, on and off and a bit hot and cold. So, yeah, it's a difficult one to call. So as a club manager now in this international window, are you just sat on your hands at home just hoping that your players come through unscathed as we reach really what's going to be the climax of the season? We have a brilliant run of games to come now. Yeah, absolutely going to be looking at those games, wanting your players to stay fit and healthy and have good games for the country. Uh, but also you're working on the training ground with the players that are, are staying behind and making sure they're um, at the races, still firing, practice on, practicing on your finishing skills, the fitness, all that kind of thing, just to keep them focused too, having team meetings um, while, the, while the international players are away. So like Mark Skinner said before, it doesn't stop once, just because it's international break, the players at home are still working um, and trying to stay in the right frame of mind for when they come back. Yeah, but Chelsea and Arsenal have got to compete in the Champions League as well, Fern. So I guess who would you rather be? Would you rather have those games coming thick and fast or as a manager? You want to be competing on all fronts, don't you? But 
does it feel like the WSL is a priority for some of those teams or is the Champions League now the ultimate for someone like Emma Hayes and Chelsea? May maybe their attention could be diverted here. I definitely think Chelsea will be looking towards the Champions League and thinking this is the year to do it. This is the year we want to win it. Um, obviously, you've got Leon coming up, so that's a tough, tough game for them. But I think if you're Manchester United, you've got a little bit of time to focus purely on the league and that, that's all you're focusing on. For me, they're in a great position now to just focus on the league and, you know, on all fronts. So I think they're probably in the better position, WSL concerned. OK, well, here are the weekend's results and there's still some games going on, of course, as well. They're coming, I promise you. So confirmation on Saturday in the game that we took in yesterday, Manchester City beating Arsenal. That was a massive win, 2-1. And then today we've seen Mark Skinner's Manchester United go back to the top of the WSL by beating Spurs 2-1. Right now at half-time, what a game at Brighton. Rachel Daly's got her 10th of the season. She scored one of those five goals against Brighton. Brighton actually took the lead after three minutes, but then Villa scored three in eight minutes, and they're now 5-1 up. And oh, that's a massive game as well in the context of relegation. Leicester are 1-0 up thanks to a goal from Hannah Kane against Liverpool. Let's have a look at the table as a whole then as we've been focusing on the top where it is very, very tight, but Fern incredibly tight at the bottom. Um, now that, that win for Leicester would mean so much, wouldn't it, today? They'd almost feel back in the mix with those teams just above them. Yeah, definitely. And they'll be looking at the teams above them and thinking we can nick points. As you see Tottenham today on a losing streak, Brighton again, not looking good against Aston Villa today, conceding far too many goals. Um, and obviously Redden just above them. So if they can keep that result against Liverpool today, it definitely keeps them in the mix and it keeps that relegation battle a little bit more exciting rather than it just being so one-sided. Rachel Daly uh, has scored 10 now, the season joint WSL top scorer. This, <laughs> this argument's been going on all season and longer. Kelly, why do you utilise her to be at her best? Should she be playing further forward for England? Or? I think she's absolutely staking a claim. Yeah. Um, do you think she wants to? I think she'll play anywhere. She's a proper team player. Um, you know, I, I left back. She was outstanding in the Euros, mm. um, and then obviously she's she's bossing it week in week out. You don't in see the this WSL. often, though. Oh, like when do you see a left back that can go up top and score but ten she, goals? She's so clever in 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 her runs and the way she finishes. I actually prefer as a forward. Um, maybe Serena in these three upcoming games. Maybe we'll see Rachel Daly in that number nine shirt. Um, I think she deserves a chance. Yeah. I think I second that as well. I think we've got. Well, England have got defenders, obviously, that can come in and play in that left-back slot. But have we got another striker that we can look to? A prolific striker in Rachel Daly is another option. So definitely, why not give her a chance up there? Yeah, well, um, Jordan Nobbs has been recalled because Frank Kirby's injured. She's had her move now. Do you think she could stick a claim in this England squad to be on that plane to Australia, Kelly? I mean, with all that experience, yeah, it's, unfor that. it's unfortunate that she missed out on the, 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 the call up originally. But, um, you know, now that Fran's pulled out, it's her opportunity now to go in and, and train hard. Um, and if she gets an opportunity to wear those three lions, she puts in the performance of her life because these are the games now she's, she's gotten in and you need to perform and, and put your forefront, put your mind at the manage in god can't speak it's, it's, been, a, it's, it's been a long day <laughs> <laughs> yeah she has to put a, a, a stake for a, for a claim for the manager well she scored two goals today and and she she moved to play fern so it's a brave thing to do to leave a club after all that time but do you think that will pay dividends for her yeah definitely i think we saw jill scott do it last season she moved over to villa and kind of set a bit of a precedence that potentially you need to be playing minutes to even get a look in in the senior side. And that's what, as you say, she's scoring today. Um, she's now got a chance in the cup coming up. So, you know, why not? If she gets a, you know, she's got a foot in the door now, she's got to make sure she stays there. But all these positive selection problems, they're positive. It's, it's, it's an oxymoron, isn't it? Positive <laughs> selection problems. But for Serena Vigman, she'll be delighted that so many of her players are hitting brilliant form just when she wants to be selecting them. Yeah, absolutely. It's a headache for her. It really is. You know, when, when me and Fern were playing, the squad pretty much picked itself. And some players were getting in without actually playing well for their clubs. But now we have such a big talent pool that everybody has to be performing week in, week out. Um, and, and, and trying to get the manager to look at them and yeah it's a, it's a headache for the manager it's a good place for England Kelly. women's football team to be in yeah absolutely it's a positive discussion for sure Kelly Fern great to have that time to talk about that uh, towards the end today and Arsenal play Reading 6.30 Sky Sports Football March the 12th with us and thank you for your company today a massive win for Manchester United who are back on top goodbye